All right, peoples, this is Ross. I want to show you guys really the tastiest peach that I've ever tried by far. Like, it's not even close. Um, it's, it's an Indian peach. It's an Indian blood peach. And uh, I don't know the real story behind these. I guess these are somehow related in some way. It's an old heirloom. Um, there's the Indian blood freestone, and there's the Indian blood clingstone. And the major difference there, I guess, in the name is really just if it's a freestone or a clingstone. I don't personally know if there's any differences in flavor, texture, uh, if the tree itself is different. I'm sure they are in some way. But for the most part, um, I am extremely impressed with this peach. It blows any other peach I've ever had out of the water, whether that was a homegrown peach, uh, a store-bought peach, whatever they have a the most interesting flavor i wouldn't even say that it's a yellow peach or a white peach i think it's somewhere in the middle of them both i think you're bringing in the best of both into one peach they're also strikingly beautiful and what i want to do for you guys in this video is actually taste it i'll show you guys the inside but i want to talk about these trees right here this little planting because essentially we have uh, a number of peaches on the property you know i'm growing i think um, seven different varieties of peaches, uh, one variety of nectarine. You probably have seen my espalier peaches in the back um, that are against the fence on the south side of the house. This is the north side, and these guys are planted in kind of a Dave Wilson nursery style. So I have four trees over here. These are three yellow peaches and one yellow, um, I'm sorry, three white peaches and one yellow peach. This is planted all in the same hole and they kind of form one giant tree. And I've pruned out everything kind of in the center so that each tree grows away from each other, giving us that open center form that you should have with most stone fruits in humid climates. I do prefer actually the espalier form, but these do really well just like this. Um, haven't had a whole lot of disease pressure, haven't had a whole lot of pest pressure. Uh, the real thing I struggle with here with these peaches, believe it or not, is actually the birds. The cat birds will take off the entire peach off the tree when they're not even really perfectly ripe. Even with an organza bag over top, they can get through nets, they'll rip through the bags, they'll eat the entirety of the peach. Um, it is ridiculous <laughs> that I have to deal with these birds. We may get ourselves, I think, uh, some bird baths next year just to see what happens, but I'm not really... Um, too hopeful to be honest with you because it seems like they're eating the entire peach and not just going after some uh, some water but uh, these peaches in general I also have let's say on this side so you can separate this right down the middle is that this is the four peaches here on the right which are standards excuse the noise there guys so these are standards and of course they're a lot taller than what's here on the left which are the semi-dwarfs. So the Indian free is right here. The Indian free stone, which we're gonna show you guys, is right here. This is a semi, and then we also have the Arctic Glow nectarine next to it, planted in the same hole, uh, which is also a semi. And the difference in size is clear, and the difference in vigor, the difference even in the health of these trees is kind of ridiculous, because you can really tell the difference in color. I mean, this is so lush and green. This is a lot paler in color. It has a lot more disease on the leaves, a lot more spots, almost like rust. Um, I don't really know exactly what this is. It's not peach leaf curl, but you can see these, these spots. Maybe it's getting ready for the winter time. But regardless, uh, these trees here on the left, the semis get way more sunlight even though this is the north side of the, the property, the sun does come over midday over the side of the house here and sets on my right. So if it sets on my right and this is the north side, the trees actually behind it, which are the standards, I purposely planted there so they would get more sun because the shorter trees need to be in front. Um, otherwise they would probably get shaded out. Um, but as you can see, they doesn't even matter more sunlight it didn't even make a difference they're really just not doing nearly as well um, which is really quite interesting i'm very uh surprised and i i always thought 
as many examples now on my property that the standard trees do way better than the semis or the dwarf trees. And I think the reason for that is probably in the soil because it is a heavy clay here. I think uh, the semis and the, the dwarfs really struggle to get their roots um, penetrating through that, that clay. So I personally don't recommend dwarf trees at all. And what I decided to do when I planted these trees, actually really two years ago, I planted them, not this last spring, but I think the spring before, uh, they were in pots for a while, but the semis, I actually buried the graft union below the ground uh, quite significantly so that they would root out and actually overtake the rootstock. And um, so far, I can't really tell if that has occurred just yet, but inevitably that will, that will happen and uh, these will be turned into standards. So at some point I'll just basically have, you know, six trees here in a very tight space, um, kind of just forming one giant tree, one standard sized peach tree, which uh, in all honesty is a decent way to do it, but I probably would prefer just grafting one variety or having one tree and grafting multiple varieties onto it. Um, other than that, I think the real thing I want to mention with these is actually not just is the Indian free more prone to disease, it seems like, or more, more prone to issues. It also gets uh, plum cucurlio way more often than any of the other peaches on the property. Why is that? I don't know. Um, also, actually, the Arctic Glow gets a pretty fair amount of plum cucurlio. And maybe it has a lot to do with just the overall health of the tree. Uh, maybe that's just the ones that are stressed and that's why the pests are going after it. But I've noticed that now for two years with the uh, Indian free and it just doesn't seem to, uh, it seems to get attacked way more often than the other peaches on my property. Um, yeah, so I, what else can I say about these guys? Um, not a whole more, I think. We're gonna really, I think, open the center up on some of these, cut out some of these branches that don't look a whole, don't look that great. Um, oh, you know, like I said, open up the center. Uh, this planting here is doing quite well. And hopefully over time, these trees here on the left will actually get themselves more established and we'll have ourselves uh, healthier trees. But here is the, um, the peach here that I want to show you guys. It actually has a couple cracks in it. I was surprised to see that and I was wondering if those cracks would really have a negative effect. It would start to rot and I'm sure it would if it rained enough here. So I picked these guys before it started raining but the peach actually sealed itself oddly enough in that crack and I ended up picking it after a rain. But let's let me open this up for you guys. It's just a really, really beautiful peach. You can see that blood coloring right in there. Uh, the outside's pretty much gray. On the shadier side, it's more of a yellowish, typical red peach, but then on the sunnier side, it gets this gray. Um, it's really quite striking inside and out. Extremely fragrant, I mean, I don't think this one's going to be nearly as good as the other one I had uh, because I picked this one when it wasn't perfect, whereas the, the peach I had two days ago was absolutely perfect. But let's try it. Oh my God. It's really, really good, guys. Um, so, <laughs> talk about the flavor. This is one of my favorite fruits. You know, uh, you can think about all the different fruits I grow and rank them, but certain varieties just give them an edge, you know, like the Mara de Bois strawberry really gives the strawberry an edge. And I would say that's a nine out of 10. This fruit here is a nine out of 10, maybe even approaching a 10 out of 10. This peach is incredible. Um, whereas I would normally think my peaches are probably like an eight out of 10. Um, I think my apricots are a 9 out of 10, and the peach is now an 8 out of 10, but this one 
I mean, it just really changes the whole game. It changes really the way I think about peaches. You know, it's like it's like the uh, it's like the James Harden of of peaches. <laughs> It's just so good. Um, obviously, the sweetness is there. The bricks is there. Um, the acidity is there, too. But it's not like an overpowering acidity. It's not an overpowering peach flavor. It's, um, it's like a perfectly balanced peach. It's just so, so good. I really don't know how to describe it any better than, it's kind of like a mix between a white peach and a yellow peach. And you can see the pit just came right out really, really easily. Lots of juice, lots of flavor. The skin actually is quite pleasant as well. Some people don't like eating the skin on peaches. I find that this one isn't all that tough or annoying to eat. So much juice, guys. So much sugar. It's actually insane <laughs> how much nectar is in this peach. That's crazy. So that's my recommendation here, guys. Um, find this peach. Uh, it's not easy. It's not difficult to find. Uh, you can get this peach for like a standard Indian free peach for like uh, 30 to 50 bucks, uh, which is really not a whole lot. So if you're gonna plant any one peach, I think this would be it for me. Probably this and maybe something that's gonna pollinate it well. Um, I imagine maybe because this one, it ripens so late, maybe it also flowers late. I don't, I don't know how necessarily true that is, but if it does flower late, Maybe it does. I have to look at my records. Maybe I'll keep track of it next year. If it does flower late, that's actually a really good positive as well for this climate because then it would also avoid frosts. Um, if it ripens significantly later in the season, it may also avoid things like rot. So if you struggle with different things, it's interesting, I think, to play around with not just, you know, obviously different flavors of peaches, but when do they ripen and what are what diseases and what things happen at those different times of the year um so this one could be a good choice for me forever you know um obviously i don't know in terms of just having it for as short of a time as i have but um the flavor alone is enough for me to say everybody's got to try this peach <laughs> all right guys we'll talk to you all soon all right uh take care i hope you enjoyed this one Hit that subscribe button, all right? We'll see you guys for the next one.